Okay, so. So hello everyone, very, very welcome to all of you uh, to, to come and join us. I'm just going to mute everyone if you don't mind. And uh, then I'm going to unmute our speaker, of course. And uh, so, just a, a very warm welcome to all of you. And my name is Leona De Pasquale. I am the head of training for YED. So for those of you who uh, don't know YED, we are a London-based wine training company and we specialize in uh, training the hospitality trade in the UK. So, and uh, so, so far, um, since the, you know, the lockdown in, in London, we've been uh, doing quite a lot of master classes every Monday at two o'clock. So, and uh, so this month we have four more. So Brie and Per Carson, our speakers today, they kick off today as our first uh, organic and biodynamic wine seminar. And then next week, we have La Laura Clay, who is the chairman of the Association of Wine Educators. So she will be sharing all her knowledge about border wine. And then follow up is Emma Simonton, MW. She will be talking about Australian wine. And the last finale for June will be um, Daniel Carniel from uh, Oeno uh, Group. So it's a specialized company here in the UK and talking about fine wine. Okay, so if for anyone who wants to you know, join us, I will send you uh, all the information uh, later on after the session and you can by all means sign up. So welcome everyone once again, because there's more people <laughs> who's joined and I'm just start, uh, okay. And so today we are really, really happy to have a brief and uh, you know, Per Carson. They are Swedish journalists and authors of many, many books, okay? But most of them in Swedish and some of them in English. And the book, which is just right behind me, here, okay? This book is published in English, okay? So it is really, really our honor to be able to, you know, uh, invite them, both of them today, and to share, of, uh, to share their knowledge about organic and bio biodynamic wine. So for those of you who have joined us before, you, today will be a little bit different, okay? So there will be no presentation, no slides. So everyone be focused, okay? So what we're, Breed and Per will be doing, because they are both journalists, so what they are going to do is they are going to interview each other, and it's a bit of like, okay, <laughs> <one and two. laughs> and then and we will be able to then get the answers and then you know, learn quite yes, a lot from them, okay? So before I <clears throat> pass my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, before I pass my uh, virtual podium to them, just very quickly to give everyone our information uh, about Wyatt in case anyone wanted to uh, follow up our, you know, some of the news from us. So we have, we are the WCT provider as well. We run corporate events and we have a government funded level two certificate in wine service as well. So anyone wanted to know a little bit more you will you find all the information here okay so enough from me i'll stop share and then it's all yours over to you Breed and pearl thank you very much leona i hope everyone can hear us well and we are very happy to be here so uh, so let's get started on yeah, organic wines yes I, I, actually i will be asking the questions and uh, <laughs> The main author of this book that you mentioned, uh, who is sitting next to me here, she is going to answer me on my stupid question. So let's start with the first ah, question, first, Brit. The easy one. Yeah. What really is organic wine? Yes. Good question. It is quite an easy question, actually, because in Europe, uh, in Europe it's easy because we have very defined, clear rules about what uh, organic wine is about. Uh, the official uh, certification for organic wines, uh, for organics, was established in 1991 in the EU. And so, the rules. What you can do in the vineyard. In the vineyard, you are not allowed to use any synthetic chemical products. So you cannot use any artificial uh, fertilizer, you cannot use any synthetic chemical uh, pesticides or herbicides. 
And another thing is that you cannot use NNGMOs, so no genetic modified products. Uh, in the cellar, you are allowed less additives than a conventional wine. Uh, the difference is not that big, but still it's an important distinction. You can use, so now what is permitted, you can use uh, copper and sulfur for spraying. We will come back to that a little bit later on. Uh, so copper and sulfur use uh, for fungus uh, diseases. You can also use organic fertilizer, uh, a fertilizer um, made out of um, plants, animals, it could be a composted uh, grape skins, etc. You can also use certain natural products. You can you do uh, plant extracts, infusions, uh, herbal teas, uh, um, things like that. Certain, certain uh, products made from a microorganism. Uh, but that's about it. So yes, it's easy. You, you mentioned 1991 as one of the dates, but you didn't mention maybe an even more important mm -hmm. date, which is 2012. Okay, so in 1991, when these rules for the, for the work in the vineyard was introduced, it was actually only rules um, related to the vineyard that was introduced. So up until 2012, the work in the cellar, so the, the process of making wine, was not regulated. But in 2012, in February in 2012, uh, rules in Europe were um, um, accepted or uh, introduced also for the winemaking. And that's why we have uh, less additives allowed in an organic wine. So, so before two, 2012, we didn't have organic wines, essentially. That's right. We didn't have organic uh, wines up until 2012. What we did have was wine made from organically grown grapes. And in 2012, uh, we had, since 2012, we have organic wines, which is easier for the consumer to understand. So, but you still hear a lot of people talking about, oh, this wine is made from organically grown well, grapes. Yeah. No, it's a wording that doesn't exist anymore in Europe. So everything is organic. If it's organic, it's organic. So you don't have just the um, organic grapes version anymore. So, so really today you should not be talking about wine from organically grown grapes. Either the wine is organic and then it's uh, both in the vineyard and the yeah. cellar. Um, if you talk about organically grown grapes, you're living in the 1990s. Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the things which, which often is very confusing for, for many people and which or even sometimes winemakers and certainly a lot of people who know a lot about wine confuse is uh, organics and biodynamics. Sometimes people even say, oh, it's basically the same thing. Is it the same thing, well, organics and biodynamics? It's not really the same thing, but they have a lot of things in common. So, um, because being dynamic also means that you are organic. You use the same rules in the, in the, um, the basic rules in the vineyard. But biodynamic is a lot about making the vines strong. And you use, to make them strong, you use certain uh, things called preparations. There are nine different preparations. And this preparations is really what makes the difference between organic and biodynamic. These preparations are uh, really at the heart of uh, biodynamic um, farming. So the two most famous ones, 500 and 501, they are based on uh, cow uh, manure and um, finely ground quartz, respectively. And they are, both of them, um, put in, um, in cow horns. And that's one of the more uh, um, sort of controversial things about biodynamic farming is the cow horns. So the, you put the cow horns in the, in the ground over a number of months and, uh, and then you spray. So what you do with this, so, so you have these two preparations, 500 and 501, and then you have another seven based on different plants. And these plants, it could, it's, it's a horse tail, it's chamomile, it's a dandelion, it's um, it's um, yarrow. So these plants, 
they are used for a reason because all these plants have characteristics that will help the soil or the vine to become stronger. It's all about making the environment stronger so that they will be able to resist the, um, the, the diseases. It's more about making the vineyard strong than to kill things like using pesticides. So yeah, and um, what you also, so you have the, the, these preparations and you can also work according to the moon calendar. Many biodynamic growers, they work with the moon calendar, which uh, shows them um, what kind of work they should do certain days. So that's something that, because they want to, they feel that the cosmic rhythm is influence, influence everything we do actually. So, but that's something so, more of a philosophy. Yeah, philosophy. I mean, the yeah. biodynamics, uh, is based originally on the philosopher Rudolf Steiner's uh, yeah. thinking in the 1920s yeah. and with some strange ideas. Now, and also you have some people who think that biodynamics is basically astrologists or uh, kind of gurus or what you say, the old wizards in the forest. Is the, are today the biodynamic people uh, generally doing it from a philosophical uh, standpoint or is it no i think i think some of them are very interested in the anthroposophy side of the biodynamic but i would i think most of them are not most of them are more practical and they they go for the for the practical side of biodynamics anthroposophy is really very complicated and and some of them do get into it but most of them don't so it's just a question of um, i think maybe you have to go into it just a tiny little bit to, to, to be fully biodynamic, but um, it's... Um, but I think what's interesting when you talk about wine with winemakers is that many of them say that, well, I didn't believe in this, but I tasted some really good wine, so I tasted, tested it in my vineyard and let's see what happens. And well, to me as a winemaker, it made a difference. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not all. They, no, they see the results. What's what is important also, last thing about biodynamic is yeah. that they use this, um, the preparations they use is used in very, very small, very small quantities, in homeopathic quantities. So uh, it's diluted in a lot of water, like homeopathic medicine. It's basically homeopathic medicine. Okay. So uh, yeah. another thing I think mm. we need to touch on mm. is uh, this thing called uh, sustainable, sustainability. Sometimes I hear people say, you know, organics, organics is old and out. Mm. What's important now is uh, sustainability and sustainable wine growing. Yes. What, what do you think about that? Sustainability is really uh, something now that is very much talked about and it's coming. And many wine countries have programs and certifications for sustainability. Sustainability is, means working the best way you can but you are still allowed to use synthetic uh, pesticides. Uh, so it's not being organic, but, it's, um, but it takes into account a lot of things in the environment and in the production. So for instance, the transport, uh, the, transport right. the weight of the bottles, the, the energy uh, use, the water, um, use of water, etc. And so all these things are taken into account to keep the, keep your uh, carbon footprint uh, low and all those kind of things. So it's, it's, they look at the whole picture in a way. Whereas organics is focused specifically on the vineyard yeah. and on the wine cellar. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. in a way, they're complementary. They are. Kind of, you can do both. You, you can do both. If you are a serious organic producer, you also work sustainable, sustainable of course. Yes. Okay, another thing we must mention is natural wines. Yeah. What, 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 is that the same thing as organics also? Well, or? now natural wines is, is peculiar, it's very special, it's a niche. Um, people love it or hate it. Uh, it's very hard to define uh, because they are so different. I mean, you can have natural wines in very, very many different styles. So mostly it's about not having any additives at all. So mm -hmm. it has always been focused on the wine production. In uh, the cellar. You, in the cellar. Yeah. When you talk about natural wines, ever since they 
emerged for the first time some years ago, it was focused on not having additives, having natural yeast, having no sulfur, right. no nothing. So it was never, they never talked about what they did in the vineyard. I mean, often they are organic, but most of the time not they're always. not, not no. always. No. And so, so. So we'll see what happens. I think they will continue to be a niche product. It's an interesting niche product. And actually, they, they do have an impact on everything. So it's interesting. They are sort of testing the, the limits. Do you think we should uh, make sure we get a good definition of natural No, wine? no, no definition. I think it's better that you have this uh, freedom for them. <laughs> yeah, freedom okay, for the so natural Let's get, yes. get back to yeah. organics, yeah. Uh, organic wine. Uh, is it a big thing? Well, it seems like it when you read about it because everyone talks about it and writes about it. But if you look at the surface today in Europe, it's 13, one, three, 13 percent of the total vineyard area in Europe is biodynamic, <laughs> sorry, organic, okay. organic, either certified or under conversion. So it's not that much, but it's still double figure since 2012. 2012, when they did this uh, introduction of, of organic wines, as opposed yeah. to organic grapes, uh, it really took off. So we had a big increase in uh, organic uh, conversions starting from 2012. Actually in Italy, Italy is the leading country in Europe. Italy has 16% of, the, of their linear surface in organic, so, so it's, it's quite a lot. Well, it sounds pretty much. It's it? very much, and uh, they increased from 2012 up until now with 84%. So oh. a lot of things have been happening this last eight years. Uh, so after Italy, we have the other two big countries in Europe, Europe, uh, in Europe, uh, France and Italy, and they have, France and Spain, sorry, they have both 12%. Uh, both of them have 12% of their um, area, surface area in organics. Is it so still growing? It's still growing, but in a much slowly, much more slowly, much slower right now. Okay. It's really much slower, but it's, um, it's been some bad weather also in the last couple of years, which actually have an impact. Oh, yes. The yeah. really bad weather makes it difficult yeah, to be Yeah, the very organic. bad weather yes. makes it yeah. difficult, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that brings me to another point, actually. Um, organics, uh, we talk about how much uh, it's growing and uh, how nice it is. Is it only good? Isn't there any drawbacks? With drawbacks, it? well, the drawbacks, we have several drawbacks. Uh, we have, for instance, the copper. Uh, I was saying that they are allowed to use copper and copper is used to uh, fight the one of the most serious fungus diseases in, in, in Europe and that's uh, um, downy mildew. Uh, we call it mildew in, Fran in, in French, mildew, but in, in English downy mildew and it's really difficult certain years, especially the, the, the humid years. Mm. And it's really so difficult that for any organic producer in Europe it's it's everyone has to do spraying at one point it's, it's impossible to uh, you should never believe anyone saying that they don't spray because but that's what you hear some people say sometimes. yeah but this vineyard we don't spray or they don't spray with any pesticides at all but everyone does everyone does. it's impossible not to so but you can try to keep the quantity down of course but the thing is with copper it's allowed it's a chemical product uh, but it's a natural chemical product and uh, it's um it's toxic for the for the environment for the soil for the water um for some microorganism living in the soil but it's everyone does not agree totally on how toxic it is so that's a um, it's discussed a lot, mm. but um, so they are restricted on how much they can use. And actually they changed uh, end of last year, up until end of last, or sort of up until 1st of January 2020, it was allowed six kilos per year and hectare of copper. Now mm -hmm. it's been lowered to four kilos. So, which is a dramatic reduction? It is quite a dramatic reduction, and some people are not, some wine growers in humid uh, 
uh, areas are not, or rainy areas, are not very happy about it. But a European, the, the Commission, the European Commission has really um, tried to have this reduction uh, introduced for many years, but and now they succeeded. Uh, it's it's going to be tough for some, yes. So another thing which is interesting uh, to, to hear your views on, I think, is why is this growing so much? What uh, is it that drives the growth of organic wines? Is it that the market is demanding it or is it that uh, there is some other driver behind it? Well, uh, actually now the market is driving it a lot because uh, now it's a, it's a sales argument, argument now because there's a demand for the demand is growing for organic wines but it didn't used to be that so uh, i would say the main reason for people for, for wine producers to, to to go organic is first they want to protect themselves and their employees and their family from these synthetic products because actually the the danger the may the danger with these pesticides that are synthetic is that they affect the the people who are handling them who are doing the spraying those are the ones that are mostly uh, affected by its toxi toxicity toxicity <laughs> yes so if you use those you have to be very careful uh, and for instance what many many producers tell us is that we want our kids to go running in the vineyard we don't we uh, you don't do that if you have sprayed with certain synthetic products. You don't let your kids just run around. So, um, so I would say that's the main reason for the producers to, to convert is to have a, a more, well, you can say more natural, a less dangerous, uh, less dangerous products in the, in the vineyard. But uh, of course, they also believe that they can make a better wine, at least in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another thing I wanted to uh, bring up is uh, with, uh, a drawback that some people say about organic wines is that it is so confusing that uh, oh, every country in Europe has its own organic rules. So if it's organic in this country or that country, I don't know what kind of rules it is. Is that but really so? It's not so. I mean, Europe has you, Europe. EU has the same rules in every country. So if you have, if you see the this um, small euro leaf, you know, the small um, the stars formed as a green leaf on the on the label, it's organic, and it's the same rules in any country. If it's from Bulgaria or from um, France, France or, Italy or, or Italy or wherever, yeah. yeah, not Britain. I don't know. We don't talk about that right now. But. <laughs> But yeah, it's the same rule, so it's very easy. I mean, you have other countries than uh, European, um, than uh, the EU countries, but in EU, in EU, it's easy. It's the same. So, um, a last question for me now. Then, what do you think will happen looking forward with organics? Um, I think it will continue to grow. Uh, it will continue to grow, that's for sure, because the demand is there. I, actually, there is now, uh, it's slowing down, as I said, uh, after this enormous increase since 2012, but it, it is slowing down, but it will not uh, stop there. Uh, but actually, as I was mentioning, the weather is, is having an effect, and uh, there's been some three or four years, very difficult years, both in France and in in Italy and uh, of course if people see that they cannot survive uh, going organic so they might wait a little uh, but actually there's a lot of research now going on also to find alternatives uh, to find products that can be used in organic um, farming uh, it's not it, it's uh, it's not obvious and there's a lot of experimentation going on but it's E, it's not easy to find alternatives to the right. synthetic products. Um, we have to remember that the fungus problem, I mean, uh, there's, the wine growers in Europe have been using copper for a long, long time, since the late 1800s when, when uh, powdery mildew 
and also I went down in Egypt it was you from here, actually. new yeah. when it came yeah. for the first time to Europe. Uh, and so it means that copper, but the, the quantities of copper that was used at the time and then in the uh, 20th century, uh, before the synthetic products arrived in the 1950s, it was enormous. I mean, it was enormous quantities of copper that were used. And then uh, when the combination was possible to, to, to um, when it was possible to combine synthetic products with copper, they lowered the quantity. So actually it is difficult to just survive, to, to just fight the uh, downy mildew with only copper. It, it's difficult. So um, but it's, possible. it's possible, but it's difficult. And you were talking about drawbacks. Another drawback, of course, for the, for the, for the wine producer is that he has to accept a lower yield at times. I mean, it's, it's, uh, that's, if he doesn't do that, it will be difficult to go organic. And um, because at one point he will have less yield. And that maybe will mean um, higher prices for the consumer. So it's a drawback for the consumer as well. So I think maybe when, when we talk about the future, the thing is, um, if more and more people go organic, uh, I think it will be maybe 25% in, uh, in 10 years time um, but I'm, I'm not sure because it means I think it the more people, the more producers that go organic the higher the prices will be maybe a little bit okay so the consumer they need to be prepared okay to pay for this uh, also to pay for this I, I think so uh, yeah difficult but, hmm? oh, okay yeah thank you very much yeah. shall yeah. we go to Questions? I, I, I already had a question from someone here um, that I could start off with. Yeah. Uh, Leona, if that's, yeah? Yeah, yes, please. Huh? Uh, well, there is, uh, I have a question uh, on if organic wines age well uh, in the same way. So I, I'll actually combine that with another question I had uh, in, uh, to, to your Brits. Um, first, do they age well, organic wines? And second, is there a difference in taste? Can you taste okay. that a wine okay. is organic or not? Yeah. So the age, actually, when it comes to the aging, it's yes, I would say yes, definitely. It has maybe not so much to do uh, with, um, with the wine being organic because, it, I mean, you have organic wines in all styles and all, you know, quality levels. So if you buy a very inexpensive organic wine, you don't age it but if you buy a high quality so, so i think it's I mean more it's not so much a question of the wine being organic it's more a question of uh, the way the wine is uh, produced i mean all organic wines yes they can age but if it's an inexpensive wine you're not supposed to age it i don't know if that was clear but and the uh, taste and the taste I think some people would say yes. I would say no. I would I would say that the, the work you do in the vineyard doesn't directly impact the taste of the wine. Um, but what often happens when a producer go go uh, organic, he pays more, more attention to to details. He pays more attention to what's happening in the vineyard. He's more uh, present in the vineyard because what I mean the the, the the most efficient weapon for an organic producer is the being preventive because that um, he has to see he has to see the downy mildew more or less before it's happening so he has to be in the vineyard a lot and i think this paying uh, attention to the details will result in a in a in a better wine okay. so yeah Leona, do you do you want us? Oh, there is a number of questions coming on the uh, chat screen. Do you want to so, take it? Yeah. So I think uh, we can go from the first one uh, from Dr. Charlotte. Do you need a higher investment for organic farming? Okay. Do you need a higher investment? Um, what you need sometimes is to hire more people. So because. Uh, if you look at uh, statistics, um, organic wineries employ more people because it, it has a little bit 
a, a doing it has a bit um it's a bit about um doing well the the attention to detail i talked about you have to be more present in the in the in the vineyard so it means that you often have to have one more person or it depends on the size of the winery but yes so, yeah. often you need more people so yes that's an investment you don't you don't need so much investments in uh, well, equipment, you might need um, something to add to your tractor so you can do mechanical, take away the, the weed mechanically because you can't use herbicides. Yes, but that's not too expensive. So I would say the most expensive thing is to hire more people. So uh, another question which has come up privately, but I think it's interesting. I'm not sure you see it, Leona. Uh, why would consumers prefer organic wines uh, instead of uh, conventional wines? Well, why, why buy it? Um, because they care about the environment. That's a good, uh, I think that's probably a reason. Uh, as I was saying, if you can buy, I think you can buy an organic wine even if you don't really uh, see, feel the difference in the taste, but because you know that the, um, the people working there at, at, the, at the estate, the wine estate, they, they didn't have to handle this uh, dangerous pesticides. That's a reason. That's one reason to buy. And another reason is, um, um, well, I think that's the best reason, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best reason, yeah. yeah. And just, I think, just probably worth mentioning, I mean, about the investment, I mean, the certification, that costs money. Oh, yeah, okay, the certification. Okay, for the cost. Yes, you have to do a three-year uh, conversion before you are certified, and the, 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 the certification cost is not that much, actually. And up, you still get sorry, you still get money from in, in the EU. You still get money to convert. So uh, it actually um, you get money, and then you pay money. It's, it's approximately the same amount. So no, the, certif the certificate in itself is not a big deal. But no, another the thing is, if you lose a lot of quantity, because you might lose quantity the first or the second year, and of course, that's, yeah, you have to take that into account. It's a cost. If you lose quantity, it's a cost, yes. It's uh, one of the questions that came up here from uh, Matthew. Uh, is, uh, is there any standard of how many harvests you must do before mm -hmm. uh, something is organic? Uh, in the rules, there is, or they, it's defined that it has to take uh, three years. It's three-year conversion, uh, working according to the organic principles before you are allowed to use the word organic wine. So yes, three years. Uh, and also coming back to what Britt said, uh, there is a number of studies that have been made on uh, things like that the yield go down when you go organic. Uh, but most of those studies look at the uh, time period in a fairly short, a fairly short time period. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you convert to organic and the mm -hmm. yield goes down. Uh, but many people uh, then say that, yes, it goes down in the first two or three years, but then it comes back up again yeah. to normal when, when the vines have gotten used to uh, working this way. So it's not it's certain not. that uh, organic actually gives lower yields. No. Not in the no, no, no. So there is another question say, are organic wine better in quality than the other? Well, I mean, no, I would say they are not because, as I was saying, they you have organic wines in all different styles. So I, I, I wouldn't say that they're better in quality. Uh, in the long run, maybe they will be, but that's too short period to say that right now. But I. Because you can have, it all depends on who's doing the wine. Because, yes, I, I wouldn't say it's better quality. I could, it's not possible to say that as a, no. a gen, in general, no, no, no. But it's also difficult to separate different things. They may be sometimes better quality because uh, the grower, the winemaker, starts thinking more about the details and start caring more about what he does uh, compared to earlier times. But that isn't necessarily a, a, an effect of going organic. It's a, an effect of working better. Yeah. 
So it, it's uh, many of these things are actually difficult to separate one thing from from another. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's one yes. question from Gemma. Are there benef uh, health benefits to organic wines? I think you mentioned a little bit, but would you like well, to the health benefits. Yes, I would say. Well, no, <laughs> it's diff it's difficult. Uh, I mean, um, I think again, not in the short run. If there aren't any. Uh, the, if, they, if you analyze a bottle of wine, a conventional bottle, an uh, organic bottle, you would, uh, you, if you find any pesticides in the bottle of the conventional wine, the quantities are anyway, extremely low. So I think uh, the health um, aspect is, is more that you keep the, um, the soil healthy. And yeah. maybe in the long run, it will help us all if we have a healthy farming in general. Uh, but to say that it has an immediate health aspect, no. So for instance, if you're looking at things like uh, trace elements of pesticides and things like that in the wine, um, that is insignificant. It, it, there is no difference uh, of any importance between organic and uh, conventional wines. The, the really dangerous substance in wine is the alcohol, and that's uh, as much in, in uh, all kinds of wine. Even natural wine is just as dangerous because of alcohol. Okay, and uh, one uh, question from Chantel. How different are the, uh, different are the rules for mm. wines mm. outside the EU? What difference, sorry. How different are the rules for organic wines in the EU and for instance in the US, oh, right. okay. Australia, New Zealand, in okay. other countries? Okay, so if we look at the, um, the work in the vineyard, it's basically the same. So they all, um, they all, uh, nobody allows synthetic chemical products uh, or uh, artificial fertilizers, all that is banned. So that's, so the work you do in the vineyard is, uh, is basically the same. Uh, if we look at the U.S., U.S. has uh, is one of the few countries that also has uh, an official uh, certification. Uh, it's uh, organized by the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. So uh, you can you can be organic in the U.S., but the difference between Europe and U.S. in this aspect is that organic wine in the U.S. they are not allowed to add any sulfur. So, if yeah. the, and, and they are only allowed uh, 10 milligrams of natural sulfur. Which is very little. Which is very, very little. So actually there's not many organic wines in the US. There's another, uh, another um, level, uh, another well, classification we can call it, uh, also uh, managed by um, the, the Department of Agriculture, and it's um, wines made of uh, organic grapes. And yes, as we used as to have in Europe, is. yes. <clears throat> and but the thing is that the producers don't like it. Organic producers don't like it because it says in the rules that they are allowed to have thirty percent of the grapes non-organic. So actually, this is a wine made from 70% of organic grapes. In the US. In the US. Yes. So it's a little bit complicated in the US. Yeah. And actually, uh, that is one reason why we have a, many biodynamic uh, wines in the US. Because in the US, you can be biodynamic certified. Um, and you, can, you are still allowed to uh, have uh, sulfur added because even if you have this, um, if you have this seventy percent organic grapes, um, you can add sulfur, but they don't like it because they use hundred uh, percent organic grapes most of them. So it's it's a, it's it's peculiar. To 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 answer the question in a little bit different way, in the U.S. the rules are different, uh, slightly different. So particularly the, well, what, what Rich yeah, just yeah. mentioned. In the rest of the world, everyone uses the same rules as in, uh, in the EU, basically. Not necessarily everyone, but usually that is what people do in other countries. There are exceptions, but one of the reasons for that is that if you want to sell your wine in the EU with an organic label, you have to follow our, the rules that are in the EU. 
Great, thank you. I'm just a bit conscious about time, but there are, I think, sure. there two or three uh, questions. So there's a question from San uh, about winemaking. What are the guidelines of organic wines in terms of oxygen control, yeast, or so, and so far? Okay, uh, so the um, yeast, for instance, uh, in organic wine, you can use added yeast. You do whatever you like concerning the yeast. What was the other question? Oxygen control. Oxygen control. Well, there's no, nothing. No, nothing. Actually, when it comes to, even if they are allowed less additives, the difference between uh, what they do, the conventional ones do, and the organic ones, it's not that big. The, uh, all the, those details about what you can and you cannot do is actually uh, <laughs> explained in quite a lot of detail in, in this book. <laughs> But I, I, can I say a question here from Sweden? Yeah. I have a, a, a question from Lars. Uh, he says, will we have GMO wine so we can have less pesticides? It's an interesting question. And Very actually, um, for the moment, GMO is totally banned in Europe. Uh, there's no experimentation, there's no research, anything. But I was just reading uh, the last, last week, um, EU introduced uh, a new target for uh, organic uh, farming. They want 25% uh, of the um, farming surface in, in EU to be organic in, uh, in 2030, so that's in 10 years. And at the same time, when they had a press conference last week, at the same time, they said that they are opening the door to a new generation of GMO. And I don't know exactly what that means, but it means that maybe uh, GMOs will be um, less banned, or maybe they will start to do some research. Uh, and it's true. Actually, um, related to this question is these, um, the new generation of hybrids that are being introduced now. It's not GMO but it's crossings between different uh, grape varieties that in the end, after many crossings uh, under, for a period of maybe 20 years, will result in a grape variety that is more resistant to fungus diseases. And this is all very new and it's just been introduced in both in France and Italy. Um, and these um, grape varieties, they uh, have a good resistance, and, um, but they are not famous. I mean, but they, maybe they have, for instance, 80% of Cabernet Sauvignon in them and 20% of a resistant grape variety that could be from the United States or something. And these grapes will require much less spraying. So that is maybe the future or a part of the future. We don't know yet because they've just been introduced, but it's a very interesting issue. And it's a little bit related to Lars' question here about the GMOs. Okay, I think we'll probably have time for one last question from, <clears throat> uh, how long can you store, was well, about natural wine, how long can you store natural wine considering, you know, it has low sulfide additives? Yeah, yeah. We've never actually tried. Uh, some natural wines are really good, so we just drink them. <laughs> uh, many of them are, you know, made to be drunk very quickly, and uh, it's, I think you can store them. It's a difficult question. Uh, I think you can store them. It depends on the structure of the wine, because the wine can have a structure which comes from the wine and not from the added sulfur. So yes, some of the, those wines you can store and age for some time. But some of them you cannot. It depends on how the, the, the structure of the wine is. It's, that's the answer I can give. Would you say anything well, differently? Perhaps? Well, you, yes and no. Uh, I mean, it is uh, kind of a well-known fact that uh, some natural wines are much more fragile and some wine merchants, they have a special section that is cooled so, make, uh, so that the natural wines will not go bad. Uh, so yes, so I, considering that some have very little sulfur in them, they can be more prone to uh, problems in the bottle. On the other hand, um, 
in general, wines can survive aging much better than you think. One of the most interesting things to do is to keep uh, young, fresh uh, white wines like Sancerre or Muscadet for a long time in the cellar because they change very much. They go become very different. Mm -hmm. uh, but wine is generally a very unfragile product. So yeah, I mean, it would be a really interesting experiment to, to age a few natural wines. Mm. Uh, Leona, yeah. I just saw a question. What is the vineyard pictured behind us? <laughs> so we're just gonna, going to tell you that this is... Uh, well, we, we are unfortunately not sitting in the vineyard. <laughs> We're, but the picture behind us is from Felton Road in central Otago in New Zealand. Okay, thank you very much. I'm aware there will be a couple of things that we have not really answered, but we can get back to you. I'm just a bit conscious about time because we know that uh, it's about, it should be about 13 minutes. Can I just yes. mention one more thing, uh, Leona? Yes. We will publish an article which summarizes or maybe even goes a bit more into detail mm. about much of what we have talked about and some of the things that we didn't talk about. So I don't know if you will be able to share the uh, URL with, with all the uh, participants or if we can share it in some way, or if people just uh, try and uh, look at uh, our BK Wine Magazine website and it will come up there in uh, maybe a week's time or something okay. like that. And if you want to know more, read our book. <laughs> now someone's asking where we can buy the book. Is it Amazon or? Uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's it's on Amazon. It's uh, in other places. Okay. All right. So thank you very, very much, uh, Brit and Paris. Really, really, really like detailed. And then I think answer a lot of questions as well. And uh, and for those of you, I think the last couple of questions we didn't or comments we were not able to you know look into, but we will get back to you. Okay. So okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Lea. you. Thank you. And bye bye. The session bye. is recorded, so everyone will get the the recording as well. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Kommer det någonsin?